Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am Mr. Photographer.com. I'm not exaggerating when I say that. Every single day I receive at least one email from a photographer asking me how to use Topaz Labs, Denoise AI, Gigapixel AI, and or Sharpen AI as plugins in Luminar AI. Now, unfortunately, for some reason, the folks over at Skylum Software remove that integration. There's no way to use those apps as plugins. There is a way to do it though. You have to use everything as a standalone app. Now, I resisted doing this video because it is kind of a clunky way to do it. I don't like to do things in a clunky way, but many of you use Luminar AI as your main post-processing application and you want to take advantage of those Topaz Labs apps because let's face it, those are really good apps. So I'm going to show you uh, the way I would go about doing it. This is the way I recommend you integrate those Topaz Labs apps with Luminar AI. Now I have this image here, it's a raw file. Nothing was done to it. Now the general consensus is, no matter what app you're using, it's best to remove noise as early in your workflow as possible because once you start adjusting tone, adding contrast, adding sharpness, you're enhancing the noise and it will prove to be more difficult to remove. So remove noise as early as possible. Now the cool thing about those Topaz Labs apps is they read raw files and you could save the resultant file as a raw file. So you could preserve raw as long as possible. So what I recommend you do is don't even do anything in Luminar to begin with. Use Denoise AI first. So I'm going to close down Luminar AI and I'm going to open Denoise AI and I'm going to open that raw file into Denoise AI. Click on Browse. It's a Nikon raw file. It was shot with the Nikon Z72 and I'm going to click Open. And this isn't a video that's teaching you how to use Denoise AI. I have a dozen videos, at least, probably more, on YouTube that demonstrate how to use Denoise AI. So for the sake of brevity, I'm just going to take, let's say, the standard AI model in auto. There isn't a lot of noise in this image anyway. It was shot at relatively low ISO. So I'm just going to use that, and I'm going to save the image. Now here's the important part. I mentioned you could preserve that raw format as long as possible. The choice right here, preserve source format. The source format was a .nef raw file. Now it won't save it as a .nef, it will save it as a .dng, but it's still a raw file. So you could do that, or if you prefer to just pick .dng down here, you could do that. It's going to be the same exact thing, all right? We're gonna use the file name, the default file name. It says denoise in it, so I know that this is the image that had denoise applied to it. And we're gonna save it to the same folder as the original one. And I'm gonna click save. So do that right away. I haven't even done anything in Luminar AI yet. Let's get rid of noise first. So we'll do that. Once it saves, I'll close down Luminar AI. It doesn't close automatically because it's a standalone app. We're not using it as a plugin. And then I'll go back and reopen Luminar AI. And when, when it does reopen, we'll go to the catalog and you'll see now we have two raw files. We have the original .nef file that has the noise in it. And then we have the resultant image from Denoise AI, the .dng file. And this is the noise reduced image. Now I want to do all my work on this image. So I'm going to go to edit. And once it loads, it takes a second to load. DNG files, I noticed, load a little bit slow in Luminar AI. There it goes, it loads. So I'm, again, this isn't a video demonstrating how to use Luminar AI, but I'm just going to do a quick edit on this. So I'm going to maybe put the accent slider up a little bit and enhance. I'm going to jump down to light and I'm going to take highlights down a touch, open up shadows a touch, open up blacks and whites. I'm going to hit the J key on my keyboard to turn on the clipping indicators. When I do that, you can see some blue is showing up here. That means I'm crushing the shadows. That's okay. What I'm going to do though is I want to push white slider up until I see red come through. There, now I'm blowing out the highlights. I want to back those off till I'm not blowing those out. And then I want to crush the shadows just a little more. So I'm going to turn that down just a little bit, just like that. So I would say that I'm done with light. Um, now I'm going to be using Sharpen AI and stuff. So I'm not going to do anything with like adding detail, adding any type of structure. I'm not going to do that at all. I am going to turn those clipping indicators off. I still have them on. So I'm going to hit the J key again to turn those off. What I am going to do is I'm going to jump down here to color harmony and I'm specifically uh, whoops, 
color harmony that was easier there we go and split color warmth what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the cool slider and maybe just make it a little cooler by moving it to the left just a little bit I don't want to go too far just want to move it a little bit and then I want to take the warm slider and move that to the right so I'm making the warmer parts a little warmer and the cooler parts a little cooler so I'm actually adding a little bit of color contrast to the image as well all right now technically I would think I'm pretty much done with this image but because I want to demo how to use gigapixel AI next my next step before I use sharpen AI is to use gigapixel AI so what I'm gonna do I wouldn't do this in real life so don't at me I'm gonna go to composition and I'm gonna crop it all right so I'm gonna change it to a vertical crop and I'm gonna make a really big substantial crop here so we're just cropping it on the lighthouse and we'll straighten it a little bit that I guess that looks pretty straight I guess all right and then we're gonna commit to that crop by closing the composition tool all right so there's our really tight crop it hasn't rendered yet but when it does there's our tight crop all right now it looks still looks crooked to me bear with me because this bothers me all right there maybe that's a little better okay all right now I have this really tight crop but let's say I want to print this someday and I want to get let's say a 16 by 24 print uh, this probably doesn't have enough resolution to print that large so I need to use gigapixel next now I just can't load that raw file in gigapixel because it won't recognize the edits I did in Luminar AI Luminar AI is non-destructive it doesn't write to the raw file it keeps the edits in the Luminar AI catalog so what I need to do is export an image with these edits applied to the export so I need to go to export now here is where we're going to lose the raw file so we'll go to save disk save to disk and from here um, I don't want to do any sharpening I want the original file I'm not going to resave it I'm going to use color space I like to use pro photo my camera is Adobe RGB but in my post processing I like to try to use pro photo throughout my processing um, TIFF uh, file format that's what I'm going to use uh, compression none 16 bits of color depth and that's fine and 300 pixels per inch is fine and I'm going to save it to that same folder that the original two raw files are in so I'm going to click save all right so now all those edits that I just did including the crop are being applied to a TIFF file and now I could close down Luminar AI again now I want to use gigapixel that's the next thing now I mentioned this is clunky so uh, we'll go to launchpad and I want to go to gigapixel and in from within gigapixel I could load that TIFF file so we'll click on browse and the TIFF files right here all right so we'll open it all right now again this isn't a demonstration on how to use gigapixel so what I'll do is I'll uh, do 2x I'll go with the standard model uh, 2x will bring me from 2085 pixels by 3134 pixels up to 4170 by 6268 so it should get me let's pretending I'm printing a 16 by 24 that should be able to print that I'm gonna keep the auto settings and you can see it did some sharpening as well it looks pretty good so I'm gonna just click Save now again I'm going to save it as a TIFF file so we'll go there compression none I like to use 16 bit we'll go there uh, color space pro photo RGB um, we're gonna save it in the same folder as everything else but now it says this file name has denoise and gigapixel in it so I'm gonna keep that there so I know which file is which and we'll click Save so it's gonna save it and again we're not using gigapixel as a plugin so it's not gonna close I need to close it and then I'll go back and I'll open up Luminar AI uh, if I could find it there it is there so once I open this up and we go back to the catalog okay on the far left I have the original Nikon raw file this is the file that has the noise in it now next to that I'm well it's out of order that's the TIFF file let's go to this one this is the .dng file so this is when I took this raw file and sent it as is into denoise AI I came out with a noise reduce file but then I did my edits to it 
remember? And then I cropped it. But we can't send that raw file into Gigapixel AI. I had to export a TIFF file. And that's the exported TIFF file that went into Gigapixel AI. So you could see that this one is uh, 2085 by 3134. And then once I was done in Gigapixel AI, I had to export it. And this is that exported file, 4170 by 6268. So I hope that made sense. They're just out of order here. Now we want to do our work on the exported Gigapixel file, right? So we're going to go to Edit. All right, now I could do some more edits in Luminar AI if I want, but I do want to sharpen it. It doesn't really need it, but I'm going to go through with everything in this video and we'll send it to Sharpen AI. Now I could send this file because I didn't do anything in Luminar. I could send it directly into Sharpen AI. So we'll minimize that. We'll go up to Launchpad. We'll go back to my Topaz Lab stuff and we'll go to Sharpen AI. And now I have to make sure I open the correct file. So we'll go to Browse and it's going to be the one that was done uh, with Denoise and Gigapixel. So both of those. And we'll click Open. Now, again, this isn't a demonstration on how to use Sharpen AI. I have dozens of videos on YouTube that demonstrate that you know just that so we're just going to go with auto settings motion blur normal and you can see it's sharpened it quite a bit looks nice so we'll click save image again we have to save it to another you know file so we'll do a tiff file again uh no compression 16 bit uh we'll give it this file name it has dot dash s a i that stands for sharpen ai on it pro photo rgb same folder and click save now once that saves, if there's anything else I need to do in Luminar, I'm done with all my various Topaz Labs applications. But if there's anything left to do in Luminar, make sure you do it to the correct image. We'll go back to the catalog and we'll see which one it is. This, this one right here on the end because that's got the dash SAI on it. And then we could go to edit. And let's just say for the sake of argument, I want to add a vignette to it. So I could do that. So we'll go to and we'll add a darker vignette and just for fun, I'll choose the subject and I'll brighten up the middle of it a little bit with an inner light like that. And there is our fully edited image in Luminar that we also did edits in, in Denoise AI, followed by Gigapixel AI, and then finally in Sharpen AI. And I recommend you do those in that order. And that will give you the best quality image with the lowest noise with the best sharpness applied. I hope that made sense. I mentioned it was kind of clunky. The best thing that could happen is if Skylum Software allows these apps to be used as plugins in Luminar AI. If that happens, then it will be so much easier. You don't have to be, you know, have all these different file names and keep track of them and open them up individually in the other applications. So that's that. I hope that helps you better utilize them in your Luminar AI workflow. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.